Hello guys and welcome back to the Minecraft Mon tutorial. In today's episode we're going to be going over how to create configs which will allow um, users of your mod to change values for certain things. So it'll make your mod much more customizable. So let's get started. First things first, we're going to go into source main Java, Harry's tutorial mod, and create a new package called config. And then we're going to create the config class. This is going to be an event bus subscriber, so at mod dot event bus subscriber. Control shift O to import mod. It means that this class will be loaded when we are booting the game. The first thing we're going to create is the builder for our config, which will be private static final forge config spec dot builder call it builder and this is going to be equal to a new forge config spec dot builder and then we're going to create the config itself public static final forge config spec config then we're going to create a static initializer and this will be read when we are um, reading this class so we are going to say config is equal to builder dot build so that will initialize our configuration so now we need to actually load the config itself so we're going to create a load config function public static void load config forge config spec uh, config that's the config itself and then string path that's the location of the config we're going to add some loggers here to tell it in the console when we are loading the config so tutorial mod dot logger dot info loading config plus the path then we are going to create um, the actual file for the config final commented file config call it file and this is equal to commented file config dot builder um, new file and taking the path dot and then there's gonna be lots of properties here that you can use we want sync so we'll synchronize this file with the config then auto save as we want it to automatically save every time we make a modification dot writing mode we want writing mode dot replace so whenever we write something new to the file if there's already something there it will override it and then finally dot build and that will just um, build the actual thing itself then we're going to log do another logger tutorial mod dot logger dot info built config plus the path again so whenever we've built the config it will tell then we will load the config file itself file dot load then we will t again print out that we've loaded it tutorial mod dot logger dot info loaded config and then the path again and then finally we have to set the configuration file to we set the config to this configuration configuration file um, config dot set config file 
And there we are, the configuration is now loaded in. Now to make sure it actually boots into our game, we're going to go back to our main class, below instance, do mod loading context dot get dot register config mod config dot type dot server and then config dot config we don't want to import that config we want to import our config file import harry.tutorialmod.config We'll actually probably want to call this server config as you can actually have things that are only with sync on client, but in the majority of the time there isn't many values that actually only sync on client. You need to usually sync them to both client and server um, to make sure it happens. So you just do it inside of the server um, config. But you can create an, a client config exactly the same the way we just did. So now we have it also have a client config. Um, for things that need to only be run on client. So let's copy this, change it to uh, config type client and config.client config. And now we're actually going to load the configs. Config.load config. Config.client config. FML path dot config directory config der dot get dot resolve tutorial mod dash client dot toml dot to string and that will load in the client config and finally server config yeah, the exact same, just server.toml. And we have created the two configs there. However, there won't be any values in our configs yet. Um, so we need to, we can create specific config classes for each um, types of values you want. So for example, let's create one for our or generation, or gen config. So we're going to get some values there'll be public static forge config spec dot int value that could be the chance so tutorial underscore chance that refers to the chance to spawn then we're going to create an init function public static void init forge config spec dot builder taking the server and forge config spec dot builder taking the client but for now all the values are going to be on the server side so firstly do server dot comment this is the orgen config So, so below these lines, it will be it will print out all gen config inside of the config file, and then below these lines will be everything in the all gen config. So now we have to declare what each value is. So the chance value, tutorial underscore chance, is equal to server dot comment, and you can comment something about it. So what it is which is the maximum number of all vein of the tutorial or that can spawn in one chunk. And I like to uh, make them quite clean by doing this. We, we go down one line each time. We add another property. And the next one will be define in range. So we're going to need a string for the path. This will be orgen dot tutorial chance. The default value, so what the normal chance is, this can be 100, the minimum chance is 1, and the maximum chance can be any value you want, but I'm going to put 100,000. And that's that declared. We now have that value. 
We can now use that value if we go into our, our generation. So we can replace this um, value here with all gen config dot um, tutorial chance dot get. So whatever we value we have this set to in of the configuration will be the chance to spawn in the world, which means people can adjust the values um, of things for their own worlds. I'll just do one more example of a value you can have here, would be a boolean value, public static um, forge config dot bool value. This can be generate overworld. So does it want our ores to generate in the first place? Do generate overworld is equal to server dot comment and then dot define or gen dot generate overworld and the default value is true. Then back in our generation, you put an if statement if um, all gen config dot generate overworld. So if that's true, then you can do all this stuff. Or it needs to be dot get. If that's true, you can do all that stuff. But if not, then it won't even bother trying to generate anything. And it won't generate our ors. So that's two examples. There's also lots of different other values. There's a double value and a long value. But int and boolean will probably be the ones you use the most. So now we've actually created our or generation config class. Go back into um, config in here. And do just above, above those two things. Or gen config dot init server builder client builder and that will initialize our or gen config. You can create as many different configs as you want. It'll be exactly the same as that one, just with different values. Um, and you just initialize them the exact same way. So now if we run the game. You can go down to run here and down to config and it will generate the server config and client config files once it's booted the game. So you want to click F5 to refresh down here. We now have tutorial mod client and tutorial mod server. Inside of client, there's nothing in there, but inside of server, we've got the all gen definition. And we've got decide if you want tutorial mod or to spawn the overworld and generate overworld equals true. If we change that to false, all our ors wouldn't generate. Then maximum number of or veins that tutorial or can spawn in one chunk. Tutorial chance equals 100. But you can change that value and it will change things in the actual con in the actual game itself. So if you have enjoyed this video or find it useful, please leave a like down below and subscribe for more tutorials. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, my name's been Harry, and goodbye.